Next on our agenda is the personnel committee items. Uh, Executive Director Nevitt, any reason not to proceed forward with that agenda item at this point? Or do we have guests that we should in, insert before then? Um, we actually have a guest for this one, which is Jeff Turner, and I think he's still here. Um, so yes, let's proceed. All right, and uh, this one's also uh, spearheaded by our chair of the personnel committee, Governor Stevens. Governor Stevens, shall we start with you? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, yes, just to uh, make sure all the governors understand what we're doing here. Um, of course, we took up uh, two of the recommendations that had been uh, directed toward the Board of Governors from the Climate Survey. And as we took up the first uh, recommendation, um, believing that the fourth recommendation on uh, strategic planning is already underway. Um, it occurred, I think, as we discussed it, we felt that, um, first off, the Board of Governors had never really had a direct um, presentation on the survey itself to then have a conversation regarding the survey uh, and to also find out uh, what the staff has done in terms of the recommendations before. So you have uh, first, we will hear from uh, Jeff Turner, then we'll hear from Director Nevitt and her team as she um, so determines to speak. Uh, and then we have a draft, uh, uh, a proposed draft regarding uh, recommendation number one. Uh, it is not my intent that we uh, take action on it, but, but instead have comments from the Board of Governors on it uh, so we can finalize that. Uh, but um, you will see that draft in the materials and that draft uh, are two documents that were put together. Uh, and I wanna thank both Governors uh, Angevel and uh, Williams Ruth for the work they've done, as well as a very thoughtful piece uh, that was provided by Governor Higginson, and I want to thank Governor Higginson for uh, submitting that. And that's all regarding Recommendation 1, which has a lot to do with governance, but really how we relate, whose duties are what, how do we proceed, and it's a question for the staff in terms of what's the appropriate uh, conversations that, are, that, that happen and how do they happen and whose roles are what. So with that, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Governor Stevens. And then shall we turn it over to Mr. Turner? Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. I am going to spend about 15 minutes with you today to do a, uh, a high level summary of some of the key findings and themes and recommendations from uh, the climate survey. So I will share my screen and uh, work through uh, the information, as I said, in about 15, 15 minutes. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see it. Okay. I think it's on the screen now, if I'm seeing it correctly. Hey, as I, as I said, I'm going to do a high level uh, summary of the information because I think many of you have seen the uh, the reports and also I had the opportunity to uh, speak with many of you uh, in one on one conversations to discuss uh, some of the findings and answer uh, questions. Okay, just a little bit of background just to kind of level set here the online survey uh, was conducted in September, uh, September of 2020 and we held it open from September 21, 2020 through October 6, 2020 and staff were asked to respond to a total of 209 questions. It was a comprehensive uh, survey. The, uh, the total number of respondents was 108 respondents and I think the, at the time the organization had approximately 140 uh, staff members that uh, all were invited to participate. So we had a participation rate of about 77 percent. Of the 209 questions, 17 were open-ended questions, and we received uh, thoughtful and candid uh, input from, uh, from staff members uh, regarding those, uh, those questions that were asked uh, of them. 
Uh, the recommendations that followed uh, landed into five, five areas, and we've got four here because we've um, uh, combined the ELT recommendations and the ET, uh, ED recommendations. There were four BOG uh, recommendations, uh, 13 ELT uh, ED recommendations, six organizational recommendations, and we offered uh, recommendations regarding training and development for some core uh, skill development for uh, staff members. So here I'm going to do a quick overview of the, the key strengths and the key, key weaknesses just to highlight some of the, the areas. And there's a lot of information here, so I don't expect, uh, expect you to read, uh, read through all of this, but I'll hit the, the highlights. Uh, job satisfaction overall uh, was uh, very high and people are very satisfied with, their, uh, with the work they do and they find their work uh, meaningful. Uh, belongingness and inclusion were, uh, were rated very highly. Uh, people feel like they can be themselves at work, they feel like they belong, and they have a sense of attachment to the organization, all very positive. Uh, there's a strong sense of camaraderie uh, in the organization, and people enjoy, generally enjoy working together. Uh, teamwork and collaboration also rated um, uh, highly among staff members. And uh, particularly with regard to uh, intact work groups, uh, teamwork and collaboration rated uh, extremely high for, for the organization. Interpersonal communication uh, between uh, teams and work groups seems to be a positive uh, perception uh, in the organization. And so these are things that we can uh, certainly capitalize on going, going forward. Uh, staff relations, most people said that they trust their coworkers and they feel like they're respected by them uh, as, as well. Uh, performance expectations in the role, uh, most staff members, or majority of staff members, felt that their uh, goals and objectives for their individual jobs were clear and they were understood and they understood their priorities. And then finally, a strong majority of staff uh, report that they reported that they were clear on how to best perform their tasks, although there were some, some issues with regard to uh, IT uh, resources and technological tools. And I think uh, part of that, as we uh, sort of uh, unbundled that a bit, that was uh, a bit COVID related, right? The pandemic related that people had to move relatively quickly uh, to uh, change their work, uh, workplaces and other uh, ways of doing work. Some of the key areas of opportunity uh, were, uh, were many as, as we looked, as, as we looked through the information. Uh, morale, uh, staff reported that morale was low. Uh, they cited a lack of confidence in leadership uh, and the BOG as the primary driver. Uh, they say that uh, they felt that or perceived that the BOG uh, betrayed uh, WSBA's values and norms and they didn't feel like the, uh, the leadership overall advocated on, on behalf of staff. Uh, with regard to conflict, many staff disagreed that conflict was handled or resolved well uh, in the organization, and things uh, seemed to uh, linger on with regard to conflict, and things were not uh, resolved uh, quicker and understood uh, by staff members with regard to the, uh, the resolutions. Uh, planning and decision making uh, staff indicated that decisions uh, were not handled well, along with the understanding of who had certain decision making rights in the organization and uh, understanding also the impacts of certain decisions on on departments as well as as individuals. Uh, communication of direction and goals. This was an area that uh, raised some concern by staff members. They didn't feel as if they uh, understood or the direction and goals of the uh, organization were communicated to staff members. Uh, resources and tools and training. Uh, there were some uh, concern about not having adequate resources and tools to effectively uh, do, uh, do their jobs. And as I mentioned earlier, some of this was in relation to uh, the uh, transition to a remote uh, work environment. Next, uh, as we look at feedback and career development, there were two areas that, uh, that were uh, challenging for, for staff in this area. One was around career development. Uh, the staff indicated that, or perceived that uh, career development was not taken seriously at, uh, at the organization or in the organization. And there was some concern about the performance appraisal system, uh, how it was applied, what it was intended to do, as well as uh, people being promoted uh, fairly. And then finally, uh, perceptions of leaders. Okay, overall staff had uh, very positive um, 
uh, opinions and perceptions of the direct managers and supervisors, and then mixed to uh, negative opinions of the executive leadership team or the ELT, and mixed to positive opinions of the uh, of the ED, and very negative opinions of uh, or about uh, the BOG. So here are the recommendations, and as I said earlier, we've broken them down into five uh, five areas. And the, the first set of recommendations, as uh, Director Stevens uh, mentioned, were related to uh, the BOG recommendations. And the, the four that, uh, that were determined based on the data and based on the uh, listening sessions with, with staff members were around the, these four. One, the BOG uh, commits to clarify its governance operating model. And the information is, is certainly in the, uh, in the reports. Uh, but the idea here is understanding roles and responsibilities and having clarity about roles and responsibilities and who is responsible for policy setting and who is responsible for uh, the operations and the tactical uh, aspects of the organization. Uh, that the BOG engages in team development. And this was uh, based on perceptions that the BOG uh, engaged in some dysfunctional uh, behavior as a team and that it didn't appear to be a cohesive team. There was a lack of trust and there were some instances of uh, dysfunctional uh, conflict in, um, uh, in BOG meetings and in other uh, uh, situations. Uh, three, the BOC commits to engage in facilitated dialogues with staff about uh, strategic uh, matters uh, in the organization. And this was to uh, the staff perceived that they weren't hearing where the BOG was going and the direction and wanted to understand uh, the direction of the organization and what, uh, what, what the future would hold for the organization. And then fourth, that the BOG engages in strategic planning. And as I understand that you are uh, already underway with, uh, with that effort. With regard to the ELT, the executive leadership team, uh, and the ED, uh, there are some of the some similar recommendations here uh, as well. That the ELT engages in in team development. Uh, there was a perception that the ELT uh, was not operating as one team. That it didn't uh, have a unified voice in the organization and didn't move uh, as a team to move the organization forward. Uh, we recommended also that the organization implement a change management initiative, initiative to influence uh, staff mindsets and, and behaviors. And we recommended this because uh, we wanted to, to help the organization uh, articulate the what and the why behind uh, the efforts that were underway and build awareness, create desire, uh, as well as uh, provide the tools and resources that people needed in order to uh, create the type of environment that uh, that the organization wanted to or wants to create. We recommended also that the ELT adopt an enterprise leadership approach to management, uh, really breaking down silos between the functional departments and think about uh, what the organization needs as a whole and how do decisions in the organization impact the whole uh, and as well as uh, functional decisions to move the organization uh, forward. Uh, this uh, number four, that the ELT develops and operationalizes strategic priorities. This was obviously directly linked to and aligned with the idea that the, uh, the Board of Governors would set the direction for the organization and the strategic priorities, and the uh, ELT would uh, uh, develop and operationalize those strategic priorities appropriately. Uh, number five was uh, the ELT reviews and updates to perform performance appraisal processes and structure, and that's uh, self-explanatory, I think. Uh, six, uh, the ELT should review and update promotions and reclassification processes. As I mentioned earlier, there was uh, some concern that these processes were not, um, uh, were not equitable in some ways, and that there was a bit of uh, a perception, rather, of uh, a favoritism with regard to, to promotions and reclassifications, and they may not have been properly uh, handled in the past. Number seven uh, is that the ELT establishes efficient and powering decision-making processes, and uh, you'll, I think you'll hear a little bit later from uh, uh, Tara and Glennis that that, it, that work is under underway, but it's really thinking about uh, who, how are decisions made in the organization, right? What's the process for making decisions and how are they uh, communicated? Uh, there was an indication or perception that things would happen in the organization or decisions were made and not everyone uh, knew about them. 
Uh, number eight, uh, ELT develops an outreach and, and communication plan to make sure that information from the BOG uh, throughout the organization was clearly communicated, people were engaged in the information, uh, and uh, they, that it was shared widely throughout the organization. Uh, nine, uh, review available technological tools. Ten, uh, administers, uh, ELT administers pulse surveys to all staff uh, to check in along the way to see how things are progressing or not and make course corrections uh, going forward. And I think some of these are underway as well. Uh, that the ELT and HR determine the uh, WSBA HR philosophy. And this was twofold, uh, as you'll see in the report or as you've seen in the report, one was to think about the idea of the administration, a uh, development and administration of uh, HR related policies. The other was to uh, work on, on behalf and work with the staff in order to create the type of culture and environment where people feel that they belong, they feel like they can thrive, and they feel like they have a voice uh, in the organization uh, appropriately. Uh, number 12 is that the ELT, ELT reviews and updates uh, the career, their career development strategy. And that uh, connects obviously to some of the findings that we uh, talked about earlier. And then last, uh, that the ED commits to communicate strategic priorities to staff uh, clearly and frequently and commit to uh, providing regular uh, updates about the ELT, the bond direction, priorities, et, et cetera. The organizational recommendations, we uh, recommended six. And uh, to, to advance these recommendations, we recommended also that the organization create a climate and culture team uh, consisting of a cross-section of staff members at all levels uh, in the organization to play a part in, in this effort. And that ties to the change management effort that, uh, that I mentioned earlier. So here are the, the six that we recommended for the climate and culture team to own, uh, if you will, or to, to play a part in. One, uh, the team would serve as uh, culture and climate ambassadors, meaning that they would uh, help uh, talk about and uh, lead some of the change, uh, culture change and climate change efforts in the organization and uh, provide connection for, uh, for the organization. Next, we recommended that the climate and culture team design uh, an employee recognition, recognition uh, initiative. Uh, one of the things that staff indicated in the, the survey is that uh, recognition was, was not uh, an ongoing uh, part of the organization or it, it didn't happen with the level of frequency that staff uh, would, uh, would like uh, it to happen. Uh, three, the climate and culture team would design and implement a mentorship program, uh, particularly for those new members to the organization so that they could understand uh, the climate and the culture and to understand how things are done in the organization and understand where, uh, where the organization was and where it's going uh, as, as part of the, uh, the plan going forward. Uh, for the climate and culture team would identify and plan ways to build connection uh, in, in the organization. And that could be through any number of things, through educational activities. It could also be uh, through uh, you know, opportunities to socialize with, with one another. And particularly, uh, this came up in uh, our listening sessions uh, where people felt disconnected uh, because of the pandemic uh, in particular. But this was a good opportunity to, to move forward. And then five, the climate and culture team would uh, personalize the onboarding process uh, to make sure that people felt like they were uh, a part of the organization early on so that they could feel engaged, they can feel like their, uh, their talents are valued and that they could uh, hit the ground running, if you will. And then six, the climate and culture team would develop the, a blueprint for change. And that would, that's based on the, the five above, how are these things going to play out in the organization. And one of the goals that we have for, for you all is that these efforts stick, right? That, that these efforts are uh, built into the organization so that they're not treated as separate uh, one-off uh, types of initiatives. And then finally, we recommended some core trainings uh, for, for the organization. And this, this ranged from uh, training with the ELT to all staff uh, training as well. So we recommended that the, the organization engage in conflict management training, 
uh, inclusive environment training, how to create uh, an inclusive environment, uh, how to practice inclusive uh, leadership, uh, as well as building uh, uh, emotional uh, intelligence in, in the organization. Uh, creating a respectful workplace, not only the legal requirements of uh, a, a discrimination and harassment free environment, but what are the, uh, the things that are going to create a workplace where people feel as if they're respected, their voices are being heard, and they are treated with uh, dignity. And then uh, next, building a culture of trust. Uh, how, how do you integrate trust into your uh, your day-to-day -day practices, and this ranges from what we might call cognitive trust to relational trust to vulnerability-based trust. And then finally, uh, coaching essentials for leaders and managers. Uh, the direct managers uh, and, and supervisors have very positive relationships with their, uh, with their team members, and then how do we integrate that throughout the organization so that uh, uh, leaders are functioning not as uh, you know people that direct simply direct work, but they're helping uh, people build skills and they're identifying uh, opportunities for for individuals to uh, develop and to grow. So that is uh, the high level summary and overview. You have all of this information in your uh, in uh, in the two reports. There's a summary report and then there's a longer. Uh, report that uh, that is available. And that, that's it. And I think I see uh, uh, Director uh, uh, Stevens has raised his hand. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff, I just wanted to ask you uh, in your earlier slides. So, so there were there were two things I took from your earlier slides was sort of uh, what the week, what the strengths were and then the opportunities. But it seemed to me that one of the strengths uh, overall, my takeaway was that um, in a sense, this was a positive place to work. I mean, that's what I was getting. But then when you go to the next one, mm -hmm. um, the first thing that jumps out is low morale. And, and I'd like you to, to help me square those two, um, just in terms of you know, how can you have the one and have the other existing at the same time? Okay, it's, a, it's a great question. So for the, if we go back, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll be quick here, if we go back to job satisfaction. Uh, people felt overall very satisfied in their overall employment uh, in the job. They like the work that they do, and they believe that the work is meaningful. Right? They believe that the work is meaningful. And let me add to that also uh, the relationship with the direct uh, manager or supervisor was very positive. And it, as we know, that the, uh, what influences people's satisfaction and their uh, desire to stay often is related to the relationship with their direct manager and their, uh, their work group, their immediate work group. But when you start to think about the organization as, as a whole, right, and, and you start thinking about the organization as a whole and thinking about leadership, right, leadership, and this is at three levels uh, in the organization. It's at the BOG level, at the uh, ED level, as well as the ELT level, that people were less, uh, less confident in, in the organization, right, that I'm doing my, my job, I'm doing my job and I do it well, but I'm less confident that these, the leaders are moving us in the direction that, uh, that I understand, uh, that I appreciate, and that I can follow these leaders. And so that really influenced uh, how people felt morale-wise, right? So uh, as we said here, they cited their lack of confidence in leadership, uh, the BOG in particular, and then uh, they, didn't, they don't feel or perceive that the, uh, the BOG uh, was living the values and norms of, of the organization. So it's, it's, it's not clean cut, they're, they're intertwined, but when we get away from the direct manager, there's less and less, there are less positive feelings about the organization. And I see, I can't see everyone's hand, so I see one hand. Yeah, Jeff Turner, I'll, I'll go ahead and just call on people as they raise their okay, hand. Okay, thank you. Governor Sayani. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm looking at those two um, slides back to back and, 
it seemed, I mean, my interpretation of this is that the staff itself feels comfortable with each other. They have a great relationship. They like the organization they're working for. They feel like they're doing good, important work, but they have a serious issue with the the leadership and, and the role of the BOG, frankly, um, in overseeing them. And so I guess the recommendations that you guys provided is, are, are they intended to help facilitate and repair the relationship and the, and the morale of the staff as it results to the effect the BOG has had on, you know, their happiness with their job, I guess, is, and their role within the Bar Association? Yes. Yes, that, that certainly is, is part of it. Absolutely. Right. And it's really to, you know, part of the things, and we only, we only have four there, right? Only four. But the idea is to, uh, one, to set direction, right? And, and, and communicate that, that direction and, and operate as a, as a cohesive team, right? And then the other part, if you think about recommendation uh, two uh, or recommendation three was to, to really think about how do you engage in a positive, respectful way with, uh, with staff, right? Certainly. And it doesn't mean that, you're, that BOG members would abdicate their responsibility now, now by any means, but how do you engage in a respectful way with staff so that they have confidence in leadership? Because what, what you're asking leaders to do is to follow you into, or, or, or staff to do is to follow uh, leaders into this uncertain future, right? And so I need to, if I'm going to follow and have confidence in that, I need to know where you're going and have confidence that you're going to, to treat me well and that I can, I can trust you uh, on those three levels of trust that I, that I mentioned. I mean, I guess, what about the issue of accountability of the leadership, right? I mean, to me, what concerns me is that the staff is feeling like they're walking the walk and they're living the values of the organization and there's less accountability with the board of governors um, and our role in, you know, walking the walk of those, of what they are, what they're living. I mean, they're doing, you know, they're, they're living by the standards that we, we impose and we're trying to set, but it seems like they're not feeling like the leadership is actually leaning into those same values in the same way. And then how do we deal with that accountability issue as a, as the bog going forward? Well, I don't know if that's, I'm not sure that's a, a question for me. I will say one, I, I, yes, and uh, the, the idea is that if you become a cohesive team, right, a, a, a team of leaders, right, a cohesive team of, of leaders who role model uh, respect, who live the, a team that lives the values, that you will hold each other uh, mutually accountable uh, for, uh, for that. Right, and it's it it takes work, right? It takes uh, persistence, and it also takes you know fellow bog members as well as you know other other members to say you're doing a great job here or not, right? And this is not the type of behavior uh, that uh, we are going to uh, to to role model for for the organization. Okay. Thank you very much. If there aren't any additional questions, I will uh, hand it to Tara and to Glennis. I certainly yeah, appreciate hold that. Up. There, are, there are different, um, oh. some more questions, some okay. people in post person. And so that I'll kind of continue to monitor this. And I okay. encourage anyone who has questions to uh, raise their virtual hand or actual hand. Governor Grubicki. Uh, Jeff, I think that uh, Pretty much everybody on the BOG knows um, why the BOG is getting the um, reviews that they are from the staff. Um, I think that's pretty clear. But um, I, for one, don't understand um, what the problem is with the executive leadership team and what the problem is with um, the executive director in the eyes of the staff. What is it specifically that they um, are complaining about? Um, what what is the especially the executive leadership team? Um, are they dysfunctional? Do they not get along? What what what's the issue there? I think and and, and just a, a few things. I think a couple of things were were happening and with with regard to the executive leadership team. I, I think it is a new team, or it was a relatively new team, and it had not uh, come together and it, it come together as a cohesive team. Uh, with uh, with voice and and direction, 
I also think, uh, can, you know, candidly, that part of the challenge uh, is that the uh, direction from the bog uh, was not always clear. And, it, and the executive leadership team and the executive director uh, could not communicate a clear vision and direction for, for the organization. So it feels a little disjointed. And that's based on, on the data and some of the responses uh, and the open-ended questions. I think that was a primary uh, concern. When you work through the, the data in, in more detail and kind of you know, unbundle it in some ways, when, when people were asked about individual directors, the, the responses are very high. Right for individual directors, for for the executive director, and for each of the uh, the members individually on the executive leadership team. But as a team, right, as a team, uh, they weren't perceived as being as as effective uh, and as leaders uh, to move the organization forward. I hope that answers the uh, the question. And it is, if you go through some of the the uh, the detail on the data. Uh, you'll see, you'll see that how that uh, plays out. What, what exactly did they want in, in terms of direction from the bog um, as to um, the direction of the organization? Um, uh, I, I'm puzzled by that. I, and I, I'm, I'm again. I can I can pull the pull the data, but it's about about strategic direction, strategic priorities. What what where where are where is the organization going in the future? Not simply the 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 tactical uh, uh, aspects of this, but what what is the the vision of of the future? And and how is the the bog going to as a leadership body? How is the bog going to uh, set that direction so that people can align with it and have pride in it uh, as, as well to, to move forward, that their work, uh, which they believe in, that their work matters in, in pursuit of that, of that direction. And that, that is the, the kind of the core of it. And I know it's a general statement, but that, that's the core of it. Is the, uh, are the issues with the executive leadership team grounded at least in part in um, the uh, replacement of the HR uh, position and the um, uh, uh, departure of the COO and replacement with a CFO? No, no indication in the data that that, that was a core, uh, core issue. Uh, my, my recollection is that I don't think that came up as, as an issue uh, often, if, I'm trying to think if at all. Right, if at all, and you, you see the timing, September to October. So some of those events happened uh, relatively recently, I think, uh, in, in the organization, but that was not a source of it. These were some long, long-standing issues, certainly in, in the organization, not, not event-based, not, not all event-based. Now, there were some events, if we're gonna be you know, candid, there were some events that, that happened uh, with, with regard to some bog behaviors. That, that came up that were challenging for, uh, for staff members that they felt like they weren't handled well. And I'm sure you, you all are aware of that. Those types of things came up, but these, were, these have been longstanding uh, type issues, feeling that there's a lack of direction, that a conflict is not uh, handled well, that uh, they you know, don't have all the resources and tools, that the communication of direction and goals has not been uh, clearly uh, developed and articulated and cascaded throughout the organization. Thank you. I, for one, am puzzled by, by that particular part, um, uh, given all that we've done, everything we've enacted, everything we've embraced, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Governor Grabicki. Any other questions for Mr. Turner? I've got one. Governor uh, Peterson. Oh, Mr. Turner, is this a job description problem? Uh, help me understand if you don't mind the, the question. Whose job right, description? I mean, every employee has, has a, you know, they work in a certain area of the bar and mm -hmm. they have certain duties and responsibilities. Do we have unclear job descriptions where um, various employees don't know what they need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? I don't think that's the, the challenge at all. 
okay. I, I can imagine that some of the job descriptions need to be uh, you know, updated or modified. And that happens in many organizations. No, but I think people know uh, what they're expected to do uh, in, in the organization. And I, I had the, uh, the, the privilege of working closely with, with staff members uh, for a brief period of time. They, they, they really know what they're expected to do. I, I think the challenge becomes, Governor, is that how do I see my job fitting into the larger picture? Right. How do I see my job fitting into the larger picture is what I'm doing and, and what I'm doing, my, trying to do my very best uh, at is that is that consistent with where the organization wants to go, where our leaders uh, want the organization to go. That's my my take on on that. But I don't think it's an individual job description issue at, at all. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Turner. I don't see any other hands. So why don't we move on? There's a second component to this discussion. I, I understand personnel committee recommendations, and I've got uh, Governors Angevel and Governors Williams. Uh, no, Mr. Here. President. No, Mr. President. Uh, the next part is actually hearing from the executive director and the leadership team on what they have done. Okay, that is not on our agenda. But really? All right. Well, executive Director Nevitt. Sorry, it's just part of the, the same part we're still talking about. Um, so I'm going to actually turn it over to our Human Resources Director and Chief Culture Officer, Glynis Kleinfelter, CEO, and uh, she'll walk through a brief presentation on some of the steps that uh, the executive leadership team, uh, the climate and culture team, and the board um, have taken thus far in response to the climate survey. And she's also going to share the results of a recent um, pulse survey that we did to sort of see if these steps are making progress. Thank you, Tara, and thank you, Jeff. Uh, Rex or Shelly, can you pull up the presentation for me, please? Thank you. So uh, again, thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Tara, um, for the introduction and for the overview. Good morning, everyone. My name is Glennis kleinfelter CEO, and I am the HR Director and Chief Culture Officer for WISPA. Uh, so you heard about the survey results, general themes, and recommendations. I'm going to pick up where Jeff left off and spend just a few minutes to update you on some of these efforts and also share some key takeaways from our most recent Pulse survey. Rex, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so following the survey last fall, several recommendations were adopt as, adopted as action items by the executive leadership team, the executive director, the organization, and the board of governors. And I wanted to highlight just some of the work that we have been doing. So in the last nine months, the executive leadership team has engaged in several initiatives, uh, team development, We've had several sessions that were facilitated by Jeff Turner with work based on the five dysfunctions of a team model. The executive leadership team defined the why and the what of culture and identified four pillars of WISBA climate and culture, and they are excellence, unity, integrity, and joy. And one of the ways that we've communicated this with staff is uh, through a video describing what this looks like at WISBA. And we do have plans for more engagement in the coming weeks. Uh, we talked a little bit um, earlier about promotions and classifications and how there was you know, some confusion about that. We are currently engaging in a full scope compensation study where we are reviewing the promotion process. We're looking at classifications, organizational structure, and uh, how they link to performance evaluations. The ELT adopted and is currently using the RAPID model um, for decision making, and that seems to be going really well. And we also reactivated the operational leadership team, which is a group of WISBA leaders who will uh, assist with the communication and execution of operational matters at WISBA. Reviewing tech tools, uh, we have made um, great strides in the last nine months. Uh, you know, we were thrown into this world of remote work and um, 
our technology uh, has, you know, we're, we're evolving and, and we're trying to find the best way to um, make work efficient. And one of the ways that we've done this is by consolidating some virtual meeting platforms. We've eliminated old technology and we're leveraging existing software such as Microsoft 365 and GoToConnect. Um, administer a pulse survey. We talked about that a little bit. We just rolled out a 10 question pulse survey, which was followed by three listening sessions with staff. And I'm going to share some of those results later on. And finally, determining the HR philosophy. I was hired as the HR director and chief culture officer in March, and my team is working hard to fill some gaps and to streamline a lot of the HR procedures. And we're doing this while centering employee and organizational wellness and doing it through an equity intuitive lens. Next slide, please. So WISBA's executive director, Tara Nevitt, has led the executive team's efforts that I just went over. Um, in addition to that, Tara has also prioritized communicating the executive director's priorities. And she's done this in a number of ways. She's rolled out executive director videos. These are monthly updates to all staff about what she's working on, what are some of our operational initiatives. Um, I talked a little bit about the operational leadership team, and uh, we... Tara ensures that there is a robust recap of all of our meetings and rundowns, and this is sent to various stakeholders. There were some organizational goals as well. Um, so in response to that, the climate and culture team was established. This is a cross-departmental group comprised of 15 employees. This group was established at the beginning of this year with a charter and goals. Uh, their, their role is to identify, recommend, and implement programs and events to create and foster the desired WISBA climate and culture. And some of the things that are working on include launching an ambassador program in fiscal year 22 as a way to improve communications, um, to enhance the new employee onboarding experience, and to establish multiple ways for staff to feel connected to WISBA and to bring issues forward. Additional initiatives will be developed over time, and that includes a mentoring program, um, sponsoring, team building opportunities, and some social events as well. Next slide, please. And last but not least, the BOG. So the um, Board of Governors, uh, you know, especially the Personnel Committee, has been digging into the climate and culture survey results and the four recommendations that were made over the last few months. And at the last board meeting, the Personnel Committee presented a couple of action items. Uh, last At the last board meeting, um, you agreed uh, to take action on two of the recommendations. That was a commitment to engage in team development, and that's going to be rolled out later on this year, and also a commitment to engaging with staff. Um, I'm happy to say that this has already uh, started. Back in June, a group of governors joined the WISBA All Staff Meeting, and I know that there are plans to have um, open dialogue with them in the future. The Long Range Strategic Planning Council is already tackling one of the board's recommendations, and they're engaged in strategic planning. And finally, action is being taken on the first recommendation, and that is to clarify the board's uh, scope and authority. And so in just a moment, you're going to hear from a subgroup of the personnel committee who is taking a first pass at clarifying the uh, Board of Governors governance um, operating model. Next slide, please. So as mentioned earlier, a 10 question pulse survey was sent to was sent out to our employees in July. And just this week, we wrapped up the last of our listening sessions with staff. Uh, 74 employees responded to the survey. So not including the executive leadership team, that's about 60% of staff. We use the same six point Likert scale that was used at the um, for the previous survey uh, with ratings from highly agree to highly disagree with a neutral option in the middle. And every question in the pulse survey had an open-ended answer option for additional comments. 
So we asked uh, questions about the key areas of opportunity that Jeff identified for you earlier, morale, conflict resolution, decision making, goal setting, and um, perceptions of leadership teams. So the executive director, the ELT, and the board of governors. What was the point of the Pulse survey? It wasn't just to tick a box that, yes, we've done it. It was because we want to see where we're trending. Um, what are we doing well? And how do we keep doing that? And on the flip side, what are, what are we missing? And, and what do we need to do so that we can move the needle in, in the right direction? And the survey results also served as the foundation for our listening sessions, which provided valuable impact uh, in, input and perspectives from our staff. Um, something to note, I am in the process of conducting a full analysis of the Pulse survey and benchmarking it against the climate and culture survey that was administered in the fall. And I will be following up with um, a comprehensive summary in the next few weeks. And I also want to acknowledge that there are several factors that may influence survey results, such as the number of respondents and the fact that we have about 20% new staff at WISBA um, since the last time the survey was conducted. Next slide, please. So to answer the question that everyone is thinking, are we seeing improvement? The answer is yes, we are. Um, so I want to pause there. We're seeing improvement. That's fantastic. Overall, Compared to the results from the fall, uh, the fall survey, we are seeing an improvement in these four areas, morale, conflict resolution, decision-making, and goals. So the percentages that you see um, is based on the number of respondents who agreed to some extent. So it was that six-point scale. It was, um, you know, I highly agree, I agree, I somewhat agree. And uh, if anyone answered in that range, then that's the percentage that you're seeing here. So the key takeaway is there is improvement across the board, especially with morale. Um, that figure uh, doubled from 36% to 72%. Um, another thing to note, because I know we just talked about morale, morale was a big category. The climate and culture survey that was administered in the fall, that was like 200 plus questions. And there were several questions about morale. Um, there was one question, and this is an apples to apples comparison. Morale is high at WISBA. Um, and that was 36%. Uh, and I don't want to confuse that with uh, where employees said, I value my job, my work aligns with the mission, I love my coworkers, I love my manager, those were all rated very high, but the question morale is high at WISBA, um, had a 36% agree rating. Next slide, please. So perception of leaders. We asked a couple of questions about the executive director, the executive leadership team, and the board of governors. So the original survey had about 15 questions that asked things like uh, the executive director's priorities are clear, or I trust the BOG to fulfill their role, or the ELT does what they say they are going to do. Um, the Pulse survey was only 10 questions, and the questions that we asked about leadership basically was, do you understand their role and are they fulfilling their duties? So the percentages, the percentages that you were seeing here is an average of all of the ratings from um, all of the questions. So key takeaways, uh, while feelings about the executive leadership team remained exactly the same, it improved by like 0.5%. Uh, we do see an upward trend with the executive director and especially with the board of governors. So perception um, has improved there. Next slide, please. So what are our next steps? Uh, as I said, I just wrapped up the last of our listening sessions and I'll be following up with a comprehensive survey um, and some more key takeaways within the next couple of weeks. There are also plans to administer another survey in the fall. Um, what can we attribute some of this improvement to? Um, a few things could be influencing this, this change. And I would certainly point to the efforts that I just highlighted that are being made by the executive director, the executive leadership team, the climate and culture group, and the board of governors. And all of those efforts are contributing to this upward trend. Um, there are plans for some training and that, uh, 
Next Up also includes additional work on more initiatives that were based on Praxis's recommendations and based on feedback from employees. And so the work continues and we, we continue to work on this every day. And this is, this is what I center um, with, with the work that I do and the work that my team does. Next slide, please. So uh, I wanna take this opportunity to thank everyone for their efforts and their hard work and their intentions. And I'm happy to answer any questions now, or you can connect with me offline. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, um, Chief um, Kleinfelter CEO. Um, I'm not seeing any questions. I'd like to move directly into the personnel committee recommendations. We've got about seven minutes left officially, but hopefully we can wrap this up quickly. Um, Governor Stevens, is that back to you or is it one of our other presenters on this portion? Well, it's, back, it's just back to me briefly, Mr. President. And, and that is, um, we wanted to have these two presentations uh, because one of the things I was continuously hearing was, you know, we haven't done anything and nothing's going on regarding the climate and culture survey. And certainly there were things for the Board of Governors to do and we are beginning to do that. But I would just underscore that what is past is prologue. And so whatever happened in the past should inform us as we move forward to the future. And with that, uh, Governor Brent Williams Ruth and Governor Sunitha Angevel, I don't know who's presenting, but probably you, uh, Governor Williams Ruth, because, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you all to present the information you have. Governor Williams Ruth. Thank you. Uh, Governor Angel, are you actually on the line? I'm trying to see if I can find your button. Yes, you oh, I see. Okay. Um, so speak up if I if I misstate. So the climate and culture survey subgroup started in the spring. And as we'd mentioned, we already brought forth issues that were addressed and passed at the July meeting. What is in your materials at, starting at page, pardon me as I scroll, I think it's 68. Yes, that's correct. Starting at 68 is a lot of uh, the recap of what we uh, just saw. If you haven't seen the chat, uh, President-elect Tolleson asked for Mr. Turner's slides to become uh, part of materials as well. And what we're looking at now and where we are is starting on page uh, 70, because what, what ultimately has come out of the subcommittee that it, is that it's a lot of work to be done and it's not all gonna be done today because we don't have the time, but what is presented starts on page 70 and there's both the high overview uh, of the roles and responsibilities and then as we go into an actual delineated list. And the idea is that we'll have a, for lack of a better term, make the sausage meeting where things that are in attachment to, starting at page 75 of the materials can literally be moved around to different, I mean, like if there's something in the president's column that somebody believes should be in the president elect column, with the idea is that there's just going to be a work meeting where Someone makes the motion, it gets seconded that we move sign law clerk program certificate with law bo clerk board chair. The first thing that my eye saw, I, I move to have that removed from the president list and into the president elect list. We can debate it, we can discuss it, we'll take the vote. And if it passes, it gets moved. If it doesn't, it won't. And so this really is just the presentation, if you will. And we hope that people will take time to go through and look at this and we can really create what the BOG believes are the different roles and responsibilities for individual places. And the work that was created is, is meant to be marked up. This is really just a draft. It's, it's neither Governor Angeville nor I, nor Director Kleinfeld or CEO have any belief that what is presented is going to be the final past Present, uh, final press product, but it, we needed to start somewhere and then move forward with all of us here. And even and, and we even chose not to do this at the personnel committee because at the end of the day, it's going to be passed by the majority of the entire BOG. 
So with that, I will say thank you and, and hope that everyone takes a good chance to, to really dig in and, and start thinking about how we can finally work to comply with the objective number one, which is to help delineating the roles and responsibilities. Thank you, Governor Williams Ruth. Uh, we have uh, just three minutes for questions. <laughs> Governor Higginson. Um, Brent, I was wondering, did, did you and Samitha look at, where did you come up with a list that we have before us? Did you look at the, did you work from the bylaws or Robert's Rules of Order or, or some other source? Or, or was it just, this seems like a good idea to put these things in different areas? Just trying to get a sense of, of how it was developed. Right, and so there was looking at bylaws, working at uh, other organizations. Uh, again, thank you, Governor Higginson. You'd provided a uh, article for us. That, however, by the time the article had been submitted, we'd already come here and figured that you would be able to advocate for yourself for any changes that you would wanna see. Because we wanted to, by the time we got your input, we were already down to the point of refining what was being presented and figured that any specific, rather than trying to glean from the article, what you thought was most important or moving things around, we would just allow that to happen through the motion process. But we looked a lot, uh, like I said, we looked at Oregon's, uh, they, they have a, a, a lovely public document that we used and looked at. Um, and then just a conversation as to where we thought things would, would be best, but we tried to pull from our existing policies, procedures, bylaws, and, and you know, really just put it all into one place that will make it easy for people to know. Thank you, Governor Williams Ruth. Governor Stevens, we have about one minute. That's okay, Mr. President. Um, so my, here is my ask for the Board of Governors, but it's also my ask for uh, the public as well as for uh, members of the staff who wish to engage either through the, the leadership team or directly. Um, and that is, we'd like to know your take on this delineation and, um, and we'd like to know your um, reaction and response. And I'm especially talking now to the staff because they had these recommendations. We've done this poll survey. I'd like to make sure that what we are doing is at least hitting the side of a barn. And having said that, I have a bias. And my bias is, so I'm, I'm going to be straining to figure out how we can simplify this to four or five key themes in each area. Uh, and that is simply because the longer your list, the less you really remember what's on the list. And you have to keep going back to the list. So it's kind of, what's behind the list, you know, what's the summary behind the list in terms of what those relationships uh, ought to be. And that's something that I hope to, to take up um, uh, the, the good news. And so I, again, I want to thank Governor uh, Williams Ruth and Governor Angevel is by giving us the exhaustive list. Now we can compare pair down or come or uh, combine or uh, synthesize um, so that you could, and you could still keep the remainder list. But anyway, that's my, that's my thought. And we hope to get responses and feedback from the rest of you all um, listening and you all tuning in to the uh, update that comes out regarding what happened at this Board of Governors meeting. Thank you, Governor Stevens. 